Arguably the biggest news in the history of Cornucopius just went live over the weekend with information about all of the Kopi tokenomics, including the Kopi token utility and the distribution mechanics. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto, my name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice, do your own research and own your own decisions. So many people have been looking forward to more information about the cornucopious economy, both when it comes to the in-game economy and the tokenomics that surrounds the Kopi token. And I'm not just talking about hardcore obsessed community members such as myself. I'm talking about guilds. I'm talking about investors. I'm talking about Web3 game enthusiasts and including critics out there that have been waiting for more information about this exact topic. It is now live on the Kopi Wiki under the Kopi Tokenomics page, and it is an incredibly dense document, which is why I'm going to break it down for you in this video. Let's start with the philosophy behind the Kopi token, because we have to understand what it is that they believe in order for us to understand what the functionality of it is going to be, in order for us to understand what the sustainability of it is going to be, and generally understanding what their intentions are helps us to get a grasp of why they design things the way that they do. In the first section, they make that intention abundantly clear, where they talk about the core intention of the Kopi token is to create the optimal gaming experience within the Cornucopius universe. Since Cornucopius is meant to be an MMO with millions of players into the future of this game, the, the in-game economy needs to be scalable as the in-game universe grows in size, as the, the player base grows, and as the in-game economy becomes so much more complex with a ton of different in-game item capabilities to be crafted that we can't even really imagine at this point in the game. All I'm really looking for in this section is that the team acknowledges that as the future intention of it, because that's going to give context to all of the ways that they build out the rest of their economy. They have done that, so I'm good here. In the section on monetary and fiscal policy, it starts with an acknowledgement that running a project token economy is akin to running a small country. I'm honestly not totally sure if that's true for every project in blockchain, but for Cornucopius, it definitely is true. Everybody in crypto consistently uses the term ecosystem, even though a large portion of them don't really have any legitimate intentions of creating an internal economy where people are actively producing value that other people can benefit from. That's sort of the definition of an ecosystem. Crypto projects kind of have this problem of designing their ecosystem so that the users understand very clearly how they can personally benefit from it, as opposed to how they can create some kind of a value for it. They're all looking out for their own profit. And the thing that really bothers me about multiplayer video games in the traditional sector is that they have the opposite problem. Gamers are out there actively creating value, and they're not getting anything back for it. I believe that the innovation of blockchain gaming is the thing that sort of bridges the gap between these two extremes, where there is a legitimate ecosystem, where people are actively trading value, and there's a symbiotic interaction, and people can generate real-world value out of that. I'm very glad to know that the Cornucopius team sees it this way because that's exactly how I've perceived it from the very beginning here, and I don't think that they can survive without that mentality. That's how this game is going to be sustainable and operate consistently into the long run. If the production mechanics within this game are going to be as complex as I expect them to be, then Cornucopius is going to be a model, even a digital model, of the success of a free market model of in-game economy driven by the utility of the currency. There are four core utilities built into the Kopi token that 
bring incredible value to people that hold it, and there are a bunch of built-in sustainability mechanisms that bolster its growth into the long run. The first core utility is a huge one, and it is acting as the exclusive currency for the cornucopius marketplace. What is the cornucopius marketplace? It's a great question I'd love to tell you. It is the marketplace where all in-game assets are going to be bought and sold. We're talking things like outfits, things like weapons, even property or buildings that you can put on those property, node licenses, and advertisement space. This is actually a lot more powerful than it sounds, because it sounds like they're just creating their own NFT marketplace. Big deal. But it's actually a lot more powerful for two reasons. The first reason is the collaborative earning opportunities. If you watched my Cornucopius video that I did like six months ago, titled Cornucopius Economy Revealed, then you're already well aware of Cornucopius' build and earn framework. If you didn't watch that video, I would definitely recommend it because there's a lot of really relevant information in there, but the gist of it is that players in-game are going to be acquiring resources that they will use to combine into these large structures, big buildings like restaurants or uh, fuel factories or other kinds of things that will have utility that you can produce things with in the land, and, and building those structures is going to trigger the creation of an NFT that represents those structures. That NFT will then get listed on a marketplace. Spoiler, this Cornucopia's marketplace is that marketplace. And then when that asset gets purchased, that revenue will automatically be distributed to everybody that contributed to the creation of that NFT. Gamers will come to this marketplace to purchase assets not for the purpose of flipping it to make a profit, but to actually use them and enhance their in-game experience. The best part of this system, in my opinion, is the sustainability of it. This is a revenue-generating model that doesn't even touch the inflation of the Kopi token supply. This is what Play to Earn should be like where value that you're receiving is value that is actually created, value that will be used elsewhere within the ecosystem. There are so many Web3 gaming projects that forget what this industry is built on, that we're not here to experience more money printing. And that's exactly what token emissions are when it's so aggressive. Like, the economy needs to be sustainable, it needs to be protected, and value needs to be earned. The second reason that this marketplace is more powerful than it seems is because it's actually a scalability mechanism. The Kopi token will be the exclusive currency of the marketplace, but it will all be priced in US dollars. So when gamers come in to purchase assets, they will see what they expect to see. Assets that are objectively priced that won't be moving around based on fluctuations of the market. Well, actually, maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself because I do expect that people will list things at different prices, but it'll be entirely player driven. When gamers come to the Cornucopius marketplace, they'll end up using some kind of a third party app like MoonPay so that they can purchase their assets with US dollars. But what they might not know is that what's actually happening there is that those US dollars are being exchanged for Kopi tokens. Those Kopi tokens are then being distributed to the sellers that are selling those assets. They never even have to know that they are using Kopi tokens. It makes no difference to them. Which means that the asset prices will be based on what their actual value is, not based on the volatility of the Kopi token. The asset pricing will be entirely based on supply and demand, as it should be. So that's utility number one. I'm, I'm not kidding you, I could legitimately do like an eight part video series about why this utility is pure freaking genius. Believe it or not, my original video script for this part of the video had a lot more content attached to it, but uh, it's already way too long and we need to move on. The second core utility is governance. As I have said before in previous videos, governance is a really hard utility 
to measure in terms of value, and it really depends how the team executes on it. So I, I'm not really looking at this utility with any considerable value to it. Especially in the beginning, people are not really going to be buying these tokens just so that they can vote on stuff. Well, okay, some people might. If they're hardcore gaming enthusiasts that really want to have a say in, I don't know, maybe Cornucopius is, is asking the community if they should be focusing on a improved minimap feature or working on developing the next in-game zone and they want to know which of these that they should prioritize. I could see some people having a strong enough opinion about that to want to purchase the token so that they can have a bigger say on those decisions. But my point is that in the early days, this probably isn't really going to be a main driving utility that people will want to buy the token for. Now, in the long run, when people are actively making money with in-game businesses that are happening within this universe, people will probably want to have a say on what the inflation mechanics look like of this game. Maybe they want to reduce rewards so that inflation doesn't devalue everybody's currency. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, but the point that I'm making here is that in this stage right now, this isn't really something that I'm paying super close attention to when it comes to core utilities of the Kopi token. I think this is a pretty good spot to wrap up part one of the Kopi tokenomics breakdown video. That's right, we get two videos this week on the Kopi tokenomics. That one's going to be coming out on Thursday, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that one. This paper was so dense that I had to break it up into two videos, which is actually kind of nice because this video really captures everything as it relates to the connection with the in-game universe and the Kopi token. But the rest of the stuff is a lot of content that I think investors will be interested in hearing about. Now, before I go ahead and close this out here, I wanted to ask if you knew that you can actually comment down below with a Cornucopius logo emoji. If you're a tier one member of this YouTube channel, you have exclusive access to a Cornucopius logo emoji that you can throw down in the comment section below, or you could just throw a corn emoji down there. You know, for the engagement. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.